Hi, Jimmy Aptos here. Uh, we decided to make a video about uh, breeding ball pythons. Uh, we want to show you the whole process from pairing all the way to the babies. So, uh, before you actually start uh, putting males to the females, uh, as we do, like here, uh, already made a mess, but uh, that's always what that's usually what happens when you pair them, they make a mess. So, uh, okay, let's go, let's go back to the main uh, point. So, before you start putting them together, uh, you should be certain that uh, all the animals are uh, healthy, they have the proper weight and age. And generally for females, uh, they should be at least uh, two and two or three years old and uh, have at least 1500 grams uh, when they're empty, not after feeding. So that's, that's the main, uh, main uh, concern for the females. And males can breed as soon as uh, six to eight months of their life, depending on, uh, on their weight and uh, if they're producing sperm plugs. So uh, this is the this is the weight and and the age. Uh, the next thing is that uh, we do not uh, lower the temperatures or anything like that. We just uh, start breeding our our snakes in uh, this in November. So uh, it's already cold outside. We just opened the window in our snake room, and uh, the 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 whole. Uh, ambient temperature in the room gets lower and the snakes actually feel it and they start breeding uh, very nicely so we don't touch the thermostats in our racks or anything like that and uh, <coughs> this is usually does the trick uh, okay uh, the next thing uh, we usually try to feed our our snakes during the breeding period uh, females should uh, start eating even uh, better after they are paired with a male and uh, most of the males uh, will actually stop stop feeding when they uh, go to the females sometimes they stop stop feeding even uh, before that uh, which is a good sign that they actually might uh, be interested in breeding uh, so that's the that's the we of course we'll talk about a little bit more about feeding uh, later in the video so uh, now uh, we decide. We usually breed from uh, uh, November all the way till uh, April, maybe even May. Uh, depends on the females. And you should usually breed only till you see the ovulation, which after that point there is no sense uh, in breeding uh, anymore. Or after, or if you see that the females uh, do not want to, to breed with the males, even though they were breeding before that. Uh, so, uh, so that's the second thing. <coughs> and uh, okay, so when we when we decide to pair uh, our snakes, we usually do it uh, in a three three ratio, three, uh, like uh, I don't know how to say, maybe three days uh, off and uh, three days uh, on. On, let's say so we, we, we take the male we put it with a female for uh, three days and after three days if we do not see a um, uh, copulation we just take the male out and give him uh, three days uh, of rest so uh, and they, then we usually try to feed him and, and uh, feed the female but uh, if, if of course you notice the copulation uh, in the first or second day and after they're finished you can just take the male out you don't have to wait for a full three days right so those are the basics. Uh, now uh, let's go ahead and see the, the the action. Let's say when it all starts. So let's go ahead and see a, a lock. Okay. So shortly before the lock, the male aligns his body with the female, and uh, uh, this is called courting. And um, what he does is he wraps. Uh, himself against the female which uh, um, later on um, ends uh, with the lock most mo most of the times and uh, so this is what it looks like and I guess soon we will have a lock so let's go ahead and uh, see the actual lock uh, here is uh, an actual lock 
and um, after the snakes uh, are aligned together the male will put his tail underneath the female and uh, this is how it should look like this is a different pair than the one in the previous video but um, after uh, they're done breeding uh, we usually separate the male we always separate the male and uh, we give him uh, three to four days uh, of rest maybe we try to feed him if he wants to eat uh, we do the same with females and um, after three to four days uh, we put the male back in so uh, that's what it looks like and uh, let's go ahead and go and see the next step feeding your females before and during the breeding process is uh, pretty important because you need, uh, you want them to have a really nice body weight and everything like that. So they need that to make and lay a viable and nice clutch of eggs. So we keep feeding our females all the way till ovulation. And uh, most of the females, even though they are picky eaters, for example, after introducing the male, they should start eating really nicely, like this female over here. And uh, like I said, it's uh, pretty important to, to feed your females uh, before and during the breeding season. And especially if you want to breed a female that laid last year, you want to uh, start breeding her when she's at least the same weight she was before breeding last season. So. Uh, that's it, let's go ahead and see the next clip. After pairing, a good sign of uh, females building the uh, follicles is actually something that you call a bowl wrap, which is uh, actually what you can see in the pictures above. And uh, the females are uh, cooling themselves by uh, wrapping around their water bowls, which is always a good sign to see, especially during the breeding season. Okay, so the next sign uh, you should be able to see is glowing and uh, glowy, glow is a uh, change of colors and it can happen overnight. The female gets uh, much brighter than she looks normally and you can see it especially on her head and on her neck and uh, we'll show you some better pictures. But uh, you can also see the blushing on her over here and uh, she's much lighter than she normally looks. So uh, this is a sign that uh, in about four to eight weeks she should ovulate and um, uh, it, not all females glow but uh, most of them do. So if you see her glow and she gets a lot lighter. Uh, overnight that's a good sign so let's go ahead and see the next step people say that if they glow they will go and uh, after this they start to glow in about four to eight weeks you should be able to see this which is an ovulation and uh, the most significant signs of an ovulation is the swell in the in this part of the body and you can also see the tail suction let's say it's a uh, the tail kind of looks like it's sucked in from the inside and uh, after an ovulation they should go to the pre-lay shed in about two weeks and then around 30 days after that you should be able to see some pearly white eggs so let's go ahead and see the the shed around two weeks after an ovulation the female should have her pre-lay shed and uh, after that, in around 30 days, we should be able to see some eggs. They shed, females may lay with her belly up like this. And uh, there's nothing to worry about, especially when this is, like I said, after the pre -lay shed. And uh, they do that basically because either they feel uncomfortable with all those eggs inside or they're positioning them. So generally that's a good sign. And... Uh, after that, the next thing you should be looking for are the eggs. After females are uh, done laying, which happens around 30 days after their pre-ovulation shed, 
uh, you should be able to see something like this and uh, sometimes uh, females will have some eggs outside of her coils uh, which uh, for us most of the times uh, hatch fine so uh, let's go ahead and show you how we take uh, the ball pythons of their eggs before you take the eggs from your female you have to prepare an egg box which we're gonna show you how to do right now and uh, we use the basically the easiest and cleanest method that uh, we could think of and as you can see we use uh, basically just foams like this one just regular foams and uh, then we have a, a tub just a regular transparent tub that can fit up to 10 eggs and uh, we use lids uh, without any holes so as you can see here is uh, one but it has holes but so we taped it so there is no air coming in or out and uh, it always works for us this way and then uh, so we have uh, we have foams we got the tub and we also use egg crates just a plastic crate and with some water of course so what we do we put the, the foams on the bottom like this and then the smaller part in the in the middle that's why it's cut like this so it will fit in between then we just have to, to pour some water in you don't need a lot just just enough to to uh, float a little bit on the bottom like here and the, that should be enough basically if the tub is sealed properly pro properly sorry <laughs> so then you can just squeeze it a little bit so it will absorb some of the water they'll get heavier so it, they won't float and uh, after that there's still some water on the bottom of course you can put more but we believe there's no need and then you just uh, put a neck crate on top like this the foams are uh, stiff enough so that the the foam the the, the egg crate stays uh, nice on the top and it prevents the eggs from touching the foam okay so uh, when you have that we just put the eggs in and uh, cover it with the lid but there is also one little trick that we do and uh, we actually put some of the baking paper like this one uh, between the the lid and the tub which prevents the water from dripping on the eggs as you can see here there's a lot of moisture there and uh, when you look uh, under under the under the paper you can see that the eggs are nice and dry and uh, it's not dripping on them so that's basically it this is how we we prepare our egg, egg box so now we can actually uh, go ahead and uh, uh, take the eggs from the female and it's a good idea to keep the egg tub in the incubator go ahead and try to take her eggs first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark this egg uh, not just so it's upside down or something like that but just uh, to see if it will hatch fine because uh, it was outside of the coils so I'm gonna place it here in the egg box and now actually while doing this video uh, I was thinking we were thinking about uh, showing you how to take uh, the ball python of her eggs so what we do is uh, we try to grab her gently here on the top around her head like this and then the other hand we try to unwrap her tail like this and she should easily come off her eggs and as you can see here she's empty you can also see that there's no 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 legs left in her so this is how you take your ball python off your eggs so now I'm just gonna place her for the time being here then she'll go to a a uh, new clean uh, tub so after we take the female from the eggs uh, we have to put them in the egg tub and uh, basically we many times we need to separate the eggs so they will fit in the egg tub um, so you can gently just uh, separate them like this just be gentle not to rip them and then you can just put them uh, in the tub 
one next to each other so they will not roll it's also a good idea to keep like two or three or five of them like in this case all together like this so they won't roll and uh, after that it's a good idea to candle the eggs so what we do is we take a flashlight and we just uh, in a dark room we put it all the way next to the egg and as you can see all the eggs here are good they got some veins all are nice and red and uh, now let's go ahead and see a picture of a unfertile egg which actually looks like a reg like a nice healthy egg but it's not so it's as you can see it's uh, yellow and uh, it does not have any veins okay so uh, around two weeks mm, before hatching the eggs should start dimpling as you can see here this is perfectly normal there's nothing to be worried about and also another sign that uh, uh, the hatching time is nearing is uh, the condensation uh, is much but much bigger than it was at the beginning because the eggs start to generate uh, their own heat and uh, that's that's what it looks like so the next step uh, should be either cutting the eggs or waiting for the babies to hatch or the, on their own. As you can see, the eggs are pretty dimpled and uh, this is day 56, which we usually like to cut our eggs. Uh, normally they would hatch around day 60 on their own, but uh, we like to cut them a little bit earlier. So what we do is we make a little slit in the shell like this. And then we just try to try to cut a little uh, V-shape, kind of like a like a little flap, so we can uh, peek inside without uh, opening the egg too much. And uh, then we can just close the flap back, so uh, the the egg won't dry up. So that's what it looks like. You can peek inside. Now let's go ahead and see the the next egg. So the same thing. We make a little slit and then we just cut a v-shaped flap so we can look inside see what's inside and uh, also the baby would be able to emerge through this through this hole after the babies uh, come out from the eggs we keep them all housed in uh, one tub like here and uh, they all have moist paper towels and uh, fresh water, of course. And we keep them like that until they shed. And then we move them to their own separate tubs. Around 7 to 10 days after the babies have hatched, they should go through their very first shed. That's why it's a good idea to keep the, their tub uh, humid and moist because it will uh, generally help them a lot with the shedding and uh, after that you can just put them in the separate tubs and uh, try to offer their very first meal uh, we usually try to uh, feed them uh, with uh, frozen rats and uh, basically if they do not want them then they will then we'll try with live but uh let's that's it basically that's the whole breeding process so hopefully this video will help you out and uh, you'll have some successful time breeding uh, this beautiful species of snakes so that's it stay tuned uh, like our videos subscribe of course and see you guys some more videos are coming up soon